Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to uh, this deck profile. I actually leaked my uh, deck on Twitch, so I figured I'd just record a deck profile, um, to be honest. Um, so I decided to do something that I thought would, I feel like, really challenge the way people currently build their decks um, with prank kids. So a lot of people, when they do prank kid deck profiles, they're just, they just go like, yeah, I just play three water, three red, three green, two Roxies, three field spells, standard. And... The thing, the, the issue that I, it's not an issue I have with like the community, but the issue that I see is that like people don't really ask the reason why. Like why are we playing three green? Why is this standard, right? And so what I decided to like think about more was, you know, with Mew Mew at one, multiple prank kids in your hand are actually really bad. Like they're actually bricks. Um, because when you have multiple prank kids in your hand, they don't actually accomplish too much. Um, so what I decided to do was, Basically, you know, play less prank kids so that I optimize the number to see one, but then not see multiples or lower the, the chances of opening multiples. Um, uh, mainly just because of the fact that, like, when you open multiple prank kids, like I said before, they're actually not amazing. Um, and you only need one prank kid to resolve to, uh, to, like, win the game. Like, one prank kid loop wins you the entire game, so... Um, and the reason why it was quote unquote like so I, maybe I should explain it to people who um, were wondering why it was standard before to play three three two. It was because back when Mew Mew was at three, the reason why you played three 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 two in terms of prank kid ratios was because opening two prank kids was really good. Like you would normal summon one prank kid, um, and if it gets Ash, you can then normal summon another prank kid again, and then make another Mew Mew so that you apply continuous pressure. But because Mew Mew is at one, when you go normal summon prank kid. And you don't see your rights engine, which happens quite a bit. Um, you're gonna have to like pretty much pass. So what I decided to do was, okay, so I want to play closer to a 40 card deck because um, a lot of the, just because like I wanted to see my rights as consistently as possible. Um, so I decided to lower the prank kid count um, to to basically seven main deck monsters. And the only reason why the field spell is at three is because it's a really good go second card. Because when you nib your opponent, um, a normal summon prank kid plays through Ash Blossom um, effectively. And Ash Blossom is like very common. So that's like that reason. And then the next thing I wanted to do was obviously we're adding the rights engine in. So uh, we're obviously going to be playing that for sure. Um, and then the two non-standard engines that I'm playing is Fusion Destiny and the Magician Souls package. And you might be wondering, like, why am I even playing those engines in the prank kid deck, right? Well, the theory I had was that Magician Souls is a um, is a very powerful card because it's an extra body that can send prank kids place, which is uh, not really needed to be face up to get multiple draws off the, the the deck, and it gives you an extra body so that you can make Anaconda with it, so that you can get access to DPE, and DPE I think is super needed in a deck like prank kids. Because it gives you a grind game that the one Mew Mew doesn't. And um, the way I designed this, this deck was mainly to play DPE Hand Trap Control. Which is honestly a winning strategy in this format. Because if DP survives more than one turn, you automatically, like, you win the match. Like, I mean, you win the game. Because DPE surviving more than one turn is, like, game. But the the but then you play like like uh, a small engine of pranking monsters that add a lot of ceiling to the deck because one prank kid resolving is like usually plus five, and Magician Souls also makes it so that when you open it with a rights package, like if you open like a kid, a rights, and a Magician Souls, um, you you basically go plus ten. You end on ten cards. Like you have like like four, you have five cards in hand with a full Butler DPE board. And that's not including all the hand traps you could have drawn into. So, like, it's really, really hard for you to lose. And then the, the DPE also like, is really nice because it plays into, like, um, it plays into droplets a lot more uh, efficiently. Because when you, like, I'll show you guys at uh, the combo. Basically, the way you do it is that um, you use your DPE to pop your Phoenix. You use your DPE to pop your Anaconda at end phase. And then you use DP's effect. You... Go then in draw phase, you use Bow Wow Bark's effects to add back two. And uh, it plays around droplets effectively because uh, if your opponent... Their opponent has to priority droplets to Bow Wow Bark, but DP is no longer on the board. So even if they droplet the Bow Wow Bark, you still end on DPE. 
Um, and then if they don't droplet you on the Bower Bark and they summon back DP and you Bower Bark and draw phase, when you DPE them and they can't play through the pop, they have to droplet it. And if they don't droplet it, then you have a butler. So even if they droplet the DPE, then you have butler access, which is a Raigeki nuke. So it's a very hard for them to use their droplets effectively. Um, so that's kind of like that reason. Um, and like I said, I think Fusion Destiny is really nice because it adds another ceiling complexity to the deck where it makes it so that it turns into a very grindy mid-game deck um, where a lot of like the base decks don't really have a mid-game. Like when you nib Valor the deck or like nib any hand trap against the base deck, they have no real engine, so they just lose the grind immediately. But the Pranked deck actually does um, because it's a very cons like it's also 43 cards, so it's a lot more consistent than every other, I feel like, other strategies in the meta. And I wanted to play a consistent strategy with a lot of, like, hand traps, right? So, um, so that's why, like, this is, like, the list that I came up with. Like, it's 43 cards. Um, it's 43 cards, and, uh, the Magician Souls also gives you access to, like, uh, potentially draw into your rights as engine as well. So there's a lot of, like, really, a lot of really cool synergy, in my opinion. Um, and I think, like, the the souls doesn't just draws you cards it also converts into anaconda so i see like real synergy with it and the reason why i don't play prep is because i don't really like the logic of playing prep with illusion chaos and magician souls in a deck because because like the logic is oh if you open like prep and like uh and, and like i guess illusion of chaos you would go illusion of chaos to grab your souls and then souls can send the prep to draw you a card but the issue that I found quite happened quite a bit is that like when you draw Illusion of Chaos with Magician Souls, um, when no actually no usually is when you draw multiple Illusion of when you draw multiple Illusions of Chaoses, uh, you don't have any to send off of Magician Souls on the turn two. So I'd rather just play three of these cards because these cards are really good too because they put back your bricks. Um, so like when I go Magician Souls sends Illusion, if you only play two Illusion and you top deck. The second one, and you have prep in your deck. Prep becomes a brick in the mid game, and then the the extra illusion of chaos is, um, you don't have extra illusion of chaos to send to summon souls. And like I like being able to get the extra body to summon because it helps you link climb into dark. So the magic souls also like like you'll see my extra deck. It gives you access to dark and link rebo, um, which allows you to like link climb to kill your opponent. And the really cool part about you know magic souls allowing you to get access to your dark. It, that makes it really broken is that you can take like it helps you like link time really easily But there's a lot of really cool applications where like I got nib against the uh, my opponent imperm did me I got imperm nib playing this deck and I held souls all the way until the end of my combo um, And the way I did it was I, I went I went prank kids pranks make a token and I make Karibo and I use the nib token to make link spider and make anaconda and my opponent um my opponent had like a really huge predicament because I, um, there, no, it was a game state where I, no, no, sorry, I didn't have Magician Souls. I drew Magician Souls the turn after. I drew, yeah, I drew Magician Souls the turn after. So I passed with DPE and a Veiler and I drew Magician Souls the turn after. And I went Special Magician Souls. I activate the effect of Magician Souls to send two, draw two. And my opponent imperms me. And I chained Karibo to triple the Magician Souls to dodge the imperm. So I still resolved the draw two effect. And I drew into, um, the extra Prankid monster. And that allowed me to win the game. There was also an application where I could have used Dasher to summon the Magician Souls, but I'd rather save Dasher's effect to special summon another kid from the hand because be having without any more Meow Mews, without any more Meow Mews in your deck, you can do something like Dasher summon a kid from the hand, then normal summon another kid and make the link too, and that's like also free advantage. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much that. Uh, I like Valor. I like and the hand trap lineup is like Ash, Ogre, Nib, Valor, which is the same hand trap lineup I played at the last YCS. Um, because I just, like, I just think that these are the most generic, to be honest. Like, you could decide to play Bell over Valor if you think there's more Prank Kid at a tournament from a representation perspective. Um, but I think my issue with Bell was that, like, it was only good sometimes, and Valor was just better usually because you can use it on Access Code when they try to OTK you and they can't. Um, you can, like, it's good into, like, random Rogue decks as well. Um, so I just thought it's pretty good card overall. Um, you also draw it off pranks. Like, you could also draw, you could also play Bell, like I said, but I don't know. It's either or. Honestly, it's just up to personal preference on the meta. Like, usually these, like, change. And then the other thing I changed was, like, I only played one prep. and I mean, one pandemonium. Um, which is something different because 
the idea with like pandemonium and pranks is that they're actually not great draws because they're only good draws if you open them with extra kids in your hand or you open uh you open these cards with a kid and a right so like the issue is that like these cards are only good if you open them in conjunction with multiple kids in the hand but the thing is uh, a single kid plus a rights is also like fine it helps like solve the issue but you like never need these cards to draw them you usually want to grab them so like following that logic of like you know i usually play three ofs of cards i want to see and one of of cards that i usually want to like search then i just like put these to one because i don't really want to open them um so that's pretty much that um yeah so i feel like this is pretty consistent this is pretty like coherent list i was gonna play it this weekend i might still play it anyways but yeah um so yeah, this, this, this is my prank deck but yeah i feel like it's pretty spicy um and i think dp will win you a lot more games than you would expect uh my side deck is like i was afraid more people might play dds and stuff too so i want imprims and so also like uh imprim is really good against sword soul so i wanted like valor for sword soul as well like um and so like and then you have like gamma i have droll for the flunder matchup because that's super annoying uh, there's evenly match duster and call by just in case someone plays Elich. Um, so I just wanted to have some back removal just in case. And I think evenly evenly match is better than lightning storm because of people playing like king of the sky prison in Elich. A lot of people that are playing that deck are literally playing king of the sky prison. So um, yeah, you can do the math on it. So like the math on like when you have only ten kids and forty three cards. Um, uh, it's like 75% to open one. Um, but your chances of opening two is at 30%. But the issue was a lot of people played like... Uh, I think they played like uh, 3, 3, 3, 3, 2. So that's... Uh, 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9, 12. That's 13. So like when they played 13, like the chances of opening two, which are not amazing, is uh, 48%. Um, so I didn't really like these cards. So... I just, yeah, I just, I was like, I only want to play 10 kids, to be honest. Like, it's just really bricky if you open multiples. The only reason uh, places at three is only because of the fact that it's very good going second, especially when you nib your opponent. And it's one, I, I just find that place is too broken going second to not play the card. So, um, yeah, like, like, yeah, Valor doesn't really care about being a monster. It could be anything else, to be honest. Like, it could be Imperm as well because it is better under Shifter. Um, but, yeah. Uh, the site is called YGO Party. So, uh, into the extra deck, I play one Miyomi. I play two Dudu. I might play the third Dudu, but I think two is actually enough with the amount of prank kids you play, because like, quite frankly, the prank kid monsters are just an engine to link climb and gain advantage. Um, they're not necessarily like you know like and then they set up a uh, like the pandemonium. So that's like really what they accomplish. So I just play like the bare bone minimums. I think I'm playing Karibo right now. You could cut one Karibo to play the third Dudu, but I wanted to really test Karibo because it makes it so that you can make prank it, you can use prank it pranks to make a token, which is a level one token, and then turn it into a Karibo. And turning the prank it token into a Karibo is really nice because it gives you access to Dark, and I think Dark is one of the best charmers in the game right now. So that was my logic there. And prank it making access code is really broken because you have every attribute under the sun. So that's like the logic there. Uh, but double leg spider for sure. Uh, because of rights, um, it, because of rights, uh, so like basically when you get nibbed, there's two ways to extend past the nib, imperm nib, and a lot of people will imperm nib you even with the rights. Um, so, um, so like yeah, so I'm I'm definitely I think double link spider is definitely mandatory. The Karibo could be changed, but like I said, I like the fact that Karibo can like basically turn your like you can basically get access to the dark charmer randomly uh, for no reason. And then access code unicorn, you don't need to explain that in 1DP, obviously. So, that's the list. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's pretty solid theory. Like, we'll see how I do this weekend, guys. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the profile and enjoyed the, the theory and the discussion about my updated Pranked deck. I actually just leaked it on stream. I was I didn't mean to. I wanted to wait until I did well with it. Because, like I said, I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is very results-oriented. A lot of people typically only want to see profiles that do well. But I feel like I worked on it um, quite a bit. And I feel like I... I um, I'm applying a lot of really interesting theory to it um, to make it interesting um, and like maybe like make people evaluate some of the ways they currently build their own decks. So um, yeah, I mean overall, um, I'm happy with the way I 
with the way this deck was built. Huge shout outs to actually um, uh, two people, Nesh, for building this with me, because um, he was the person I theoried with uh, for this list. And then a second shout out to actually Jojo S ASMR. So it was really funny because I was actually cooking this up. And then he hit me up. He's like, yo, bro, what do you think if we cut the Prankid monster? I'm like, I'm like, bro, did you just hack my DB account? Like, because I'm doing the same thing. And he also gave me some suggestions as well. So, um, yeah, so he shouts to those three people. And, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the profile. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And also check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!